everybody welcome back today i'm going to do a get ready with me we're going to be speaking about my dating experiences while i've been online dating or when i used to be online dating so i need a haircut so i'm just spraying my hair down with water so i can lay it down and when i get my hair cut i get a four on the top a three on the sides and a fade in the back and it's a little bit more crisp because he puts the line in but and it's only a week after my hair's been cut like some people can wait two weeks but my hair grows really fast and then I just laid down with a do-rag Or if you have um, mousse, you could put mousse so the mousse could hold it down. But uh, I'm not really going anywhere today. So, like, I don't need it to be, like, in place. And then afterwards, if I was going somewhere and if I really needed the hair to, like, lay down, I would just put, like, a, either some hairspray or um, I will put um, the mousse after the fact and just lay down for another five minutes so <laughs> this is my daughter's bonnet that it's really stretchy so it fits my head and i find that her bonnets are more comfortable than my bonnet like i don't know like i'm, I'm about to start just having a one size fits all but this could she's two and it's a 19 inch circumference but i think it's because i use a softer elastic for the toddler's bonnets which is why they're more comfortable as opposed to the adult's bonnets because she won't keep anything really tight on her head i don't know if you could hear my background the first thing i do with my face when i start i have to moisturize i'm thinking should i do this the right way or should i just do this a quick and easy way but so, for my last video, like I was telling you guys, I had got out of a four-year relationship. And I took two years just to like, get myself together, focus on me, focus on my kids, focus on things that I wanted to work on and areas I wanted to improve. And one of the things I did, because um, I was still experiencing postpartum, was I went to therapy. And in therapy, I got to explore things that I felt were issues in my life. And one of the first things they do when you start therapy, they ask you, why are you here? And my response to why are you here was, I keep on picking ancient people and I wanna know why I keep doing that. And when I say ancient people, I mean like, like romantically and platonically like i also picked ancient friends so i just wanted to work on those things that i was doing that was influencing my decisions or things that i wasn't aware of because as insightful as i am of course it's easier to see things from the outside than the inside so whereas i can clearly streamline cause and effect for other people's personalities because I'm watching from the outside and I'm not biased, I can always do that for myself. And I don't think we, any of us can. Like we all have some level of insight, but no one is so clairvoyant where they can see their story unfolding as well. So I took that time for myself and I learned about me. I started dating me because of course i still want to go outside like you know when you get out of a relationship you know the things that you miss most is talking to somebody having somebody to do things with and just having someone to share your life with someone to share the jokes with someone to be like hey ride with me somewhere real quick oh and then someone to just like you know live with so while i was single i did that like i wasn't gonna wait until i got into a relationship for me to 
go out to eat. I wasn't going to wait for me to get into a relationship if I wanted to go bowling, if I wanted to play pool, if I wanted to go to the movies, if I wanted to go walk on the beach. Like, I wasn't going to wait for someone to come along to do that. So while I was single, I was doing all of those things by myself. And of course, I have friends. And I would also go out with my friends, but I didn't rely solely on my friends. Like during that time, I really learned how to be by myself and be comfortable by myself. And I think that is very important because a lot of us are afraid of our own silence. Like we don't know what to do with ourselves when someone else is not around or someone can't come with us somewhere like there i remember there was plenty of times like i just didn't go places because i had no one to go with me to keep me company so that was a great learning experience and just a great experience overall overall like initially when you start going to like movie theaters by yourself and dinners by yourself i'm not gonna lie it, it feels a little weird. Like sometimes when you're at a restaurant at 8 p.m. and you're at a table by yourself and all of the other couples are there because a lot of people, they go to fine dining establishments because it's an anniversary, because it's their birthday or um, they're celebrating some type of experience or it's their first date. Me, I go because I feel like steak or that's the, my place where they make my favorite lamb chops. Like. I don't have a reason to go out to eat. So like that took a little bit getting used to like going to places by myself. But the more and more I did it, like it, it stops feeling normal because the more you start spending time with yourself and you realize I'm funny, I'm smart, I am entertaining. I love my own company. Like, <laughs> like some people may be like, oh, Oh my God, I'm by myself. Me? I love being by myself. It's to the point now that I'd rather be by myself than be aggravated with a person. And that is important in learning how to be by yourself because once you learn how to be by yourself, when people come along and you're dating them and then you start getting that feeling like, you know what? I wish I was by myself. I wish I was alone. That's because... Your solitude is more peaceful than them being in your presence. And if I have to choose between my peaceful solitude and the company of someone, I'm going to pick my peaceful solitude. That also is help. It helps you not settle for people when you learn how to be by yourself because then you're not desperate for company. Or desperate for a relationship because you're scared of being alone and a lot of people will weaponize that being alone to scare you to settle for something but if I am more at peace with myself like why am I gonna rush into the company of someone that's gonna make me miserable like that doesn't make any sense like no one should do that but when I decided to start dating, of course, it's still a pandemic going on outside. So I got on the dating app Hinge. Now, this is my first time online dating ever in my life. And I remember even my therapist, they really had to come by the door. Even my therapist suggested online dating. Like when she was like, I think you're ready to get out there. She suggested online dating. And I was like, no, that's for weirdos. <laughs> but of course I work. So I'm going to work home, work, whatever venue that I go to. I don't go to clubs. I don't really go to the bars and stuff like that. Like I go to restaurants that has bars, but I don't go to like bars per se. So I'm like, I'm, and then, and I'm from New York, so I'm used to, you're on a train, you run into somebody. You're walking down the street, you run into somebody. You're in the city, you run into somebody. But in Florida, it's really different. Like, you really don't run into people. Like, there's no place, there's no sidewalks. There's no place for you to run into anybody. So if you're going to meet someone, you're either going to meet them through mutual friends or you're going to meet them online. When I signed up, um, 
I pick my pictures because of course, you know, you want you want to pick your cute pictures. You're not going to pick your ugly pictures. And because I wear like a lot of hairstyles, I put up like a variety of photos. So I have photos up there with my shortcut, with my afro, with my braids, with my wig because I needed you to know whoever that was going to be cuz if you I don't want anybody that's going to have a problem because I don't know what I'm going to look like. One day I might wake up and decide I want to put my wig on. One day I might decide I'm going to grow my hair out. One day I might decide to cut it all off if I do grow it out. Like I so I like to give the, all the versions of me that they could possibly be so you know what you're getting into i i believe in autonomy and transparency and i believe in making it clear to people what they're signing up for like i'm not here to trick anybody i'm not here to bamboozle you like, I want you to understand this is what you sign up for. Like, as I got older, I don't have a representative. I noticed, like, I'm more reserved when it comes to certain things. Of course, I'm not going to meet someone and tell them my life story. I'm more reserved. However, like, that whole performative niceness to get you to think I'm a good person, I don't do that. Because I know that's not who I am all the time. I'm a kind person. I'm a generous person. I'm compassionate, but it's not a, a, a tender, docile personality. It's a very strong, confident one. So you need to know that off the bat because if that's not what you want, or that's not what you're looking for. If you're looking for someone timid and scared, I'm not for you. Once I made my profile, um, I got a lot of like, I guess, what is matches? Yeah, I got a lot of matches. I will say that I got a lot of matches um, but the problem with getting a lot of matches I see people complain when you have a lot of matches it's like you have to sift through like a lot of BS like and you don't know of course people are picking with their eyes so when people are picking something with their eyes they are just you know they're, they're gonna try anything I'll say that they're gonna try anything so a lot of the conversations that was like initiated or started was just mm, man. right and one thing I will say about men it don't matter if they look like a gargoyle they're gonna shoot their shot which to me is insulting because you ever had someone try to talk to you and you're like do you see me that's how I felt. Like it was at some time. I was like, "Uh, sir, now, sir." The same way how people love telling women what they qualify for and what they don't qualify for, I feel it's the same way that men should take their own advice when it comes to that. Because what I will say about men, like it don't matter what they look like, their level of confidence be off the hook and for me I won't I don't really have an aesthetic that I look for but I need to be attracted to you somewhat like I need to be able to look at you like I can't like if I don't see it if if, if my eyes don't see it like you 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 know sometimes you can meet somebody that's like okay and then their intelligence their personality grows on you but you then have the other ones that they are not physically attractive and then they have no personality or they can't keep up with you. And even if you give those type of men a chance, those are the men that end up being very insecure and jealous of the woman that they're with because one, they can't believe they got her and they knew from inception they didn't really deserve her and it was just a fluke so i think they live in fear that one day the person that you did they know that you're settling for them and the person that you really want is going to come along and you're going to leave them so they try to abuse you and crush your self-esteem that way you never leave them 
my first date on the app was with an oncologist and of course initially i thought he was lying about what he did for a living but me and my good girlfriend we got our googles and he was a board certified oncologist so he reached out to me he asked me for a date pretty quickly and you know i was still optimistic because it's fresh and i'm like oh, okay so i didn't want to meet anywhere close to where i frequent so like i say i go out by myself a lot so i never recommend any places that i actually go to like when someone asks me on a date like i pick places that i really don't go to that's like okay but i don't want to run into you like after this i don't want i don't want to run into you i don't want to see you and i'm very good at not running into people like when it's over i doubt that you'll ever see me i'm I, i'm so confident in my ability to disappear but I went out on a date with the oncologist and he was a, he was a decent guy. Um, he was like in his mid forties, like, but what I didn't like <laughs> when I met him, like, I guess he was a fitness buff and he had a nice body, but he, the pictures that he posted were like when he was like younger or something, because the, 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 the face that I met in person and the face that was posted are two different faces. And he had like a God complex because he kept on telling me about like, I guess his patients and the type of cancers they had. And then it was just in one thing that in one conversation, he was talking about someone that he had to tell that they had cancer and that it was malignant. And just his laissez-faire attitude of how he delivered the news just didn't sit right with me. And I know that you can get desensitized because it's your job. So it's like, it's not personal, but I'm like, I said, like I'm very sensitive when it comes to certain things and I feel for people. Now I'm not saying that you need to hold their hands and be like, and baby them, but it was just like, off the cuff that just didn't sit right with me. So we had a, we had an okay date. It was decent. But at the end of the date, like he reached in like he was gonna kiss me on the lips. And I was like, uh, I don't do that. <laughs> and he was like, oh no, 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 like just on the cheek. Sir, you you was you was trying to kiss me in my mouth. And during the day, he actually got up from his table to show me on his phone like pictures of his workout progress. And when he was talking, like when he was next to me, he was talking like his breath was tart. So, yeah, like you walking around with tart breath and you try to kiss people like, no, thank you. That that is not what I came here for. So, um, what am I looking for? I'm looking for my bronzer. Now, I learned this new contour technique from the filters on um, Amazon. <laughs> Not the filters on Amazon. Amazon got a hold on me. Um, the filters <laughs> on Instagram. But I used to think like I looked like a drag queen. But this way of contouring actually works for me. So I, I am now a fan of contour. Like you go in here from your brow. And then you go in here from like the beginning of your brow, right? And you kind of like draw a line where it's coming down like, like an arrow, like the point of a triangle, like just like you just leave a slither of white and you bring it down. Like I broke my nose when I was 10 and my nostrils are like two different sizes, I guess, genetics. Because my kids have it, the same thing, like their nostrils are two different sizes. But like that. And then you kind of go under. Like 
like that. And you're gonna blend the edges a little bit, right? And then you can't, you just like a half circle to give you a button. And this works best for my nose shape. Like I was watching Sukiyana's makeup and I realized like this is something similar to what the girls are doing. And I just blend out the edges like so. Blend, blend, blend. I know it looks crazy now, but after you put the contour in the other areas of your face, like it, it's like, you it's there i'm not gonna say it disappears completely like it's there but it's not like in your face there okay but where was i okay so that was my first date that was my first date from the app and i turned on my notifications we didn't meet anywhere by my home i didn't even meet in the same county i went to a whole different county whole different city i was not playing told my friends where I were gonna where I was gonna be so in case anything happened I met in a public place with lots of cameras and you know that was that's my first date and I was like oh, okay I survived it's not so bad and there were other people I was talking to that also invited me out but I am notorious for canceling a date you hear me notorious like i will be all set ready to go on a date and i'll be like the vibes are off i'm not going and i won't go i mean i will let them know that i'm not going but like let's say if you ask me like hey um can i take you out friday and i'm like yeah sure and then you go okay i'm gonna take you here i'm like okay and then you switch the venues or something or you show indecisiveness i'm not going i am not going and that's just me i mean you can do what you want but that's me so that was my first date my second date that i went on it really wasn't it wasn't memorable yeah like it wasn't I'll say that. Like, I don't, it wasn't memorable. It wasn't anything that I write home about it. Like, I think we just went out. We got some drinks. Um, we, I can't, to be honest, I can't remember the conversation because when I date, I let people talk. Like, I really let people express themselves. I, I, like, because I want to see if it's something I don't go out with intentions like I don't go like oh my god I'm so excited for this date this could be my husband or this is gonna be my boyfriend like I don't I don't I don't do that I look at it as like okay we we are two adults that find each other attractive we're gonna go out see if we get along on a personal level see where this goes like you know if it if it goes somewhere great if it doesn't that's also great like you know I don't, because I'm not building myself up when I go on a date. Like, I'm not building an entire backstory in my head. And when I was younger, I used to do that. Like, like I would meet someone and I create, like, this entire backstory in my head. But I don't do that. As I age, I don't do that. So, I take it for face value. It is what it is. So, a lot of the dates that I went on, like, I started noticing a the theme, like... You know, they would always start off like, oh my God, like you, like, you know, when, when men first meet me, they always want to remark that I look how I do in my pictures as if, I don't know. I don't know what they're expecting. I don't know if because I wear a lot of makeup that men expect like a hideous beast when they see me, but every time when they do see me, like they're like, pleasantly surprised like that I look somewhat normal so I guess that's a good thing and what I do notice like after a while like with talking to certain people it's like the the conversations will be like vacuous and I think it's important to understand that you can tell 
someone's intention with you by the level of the conversation. Like if some if the if the conversation is like I'm not saying you need to tell a stranger your life story, but if the conversation is like really empty, um, if the conversation is just about superficial surface level things, it's like we could have did this on the phone. And I think that's why it's important to actually talk to people on the phone before you go out on dates with them. Like, not to just meet somebody on a Thursday and be like, oh, you want to go out tomorrow and go out? No, like, get to know them a little bit on the phone. Like, two, three phone conversations should indicate to you whether or not that's your type of person. So you don't waste your time going to dates with people that you're not comfortable with. Because one thing, one thing I hate, I hate awkward like awkward um silences on dates like you sit in there and you're just like you you're staring at the stranger that you came to meet like that's just weird to me so i want to get to know you a little bit like i want to talk to you i want to have some type of rapport telephonically before we meet in person i want to know that you're not a weirdo right I want to know that I'm going to make it back home. Like you, you're not, you don't, you don't have a white van parked somewhere that I'm, this is a setup. Like, so a lot of men will meet you and then they'll, if a man only wants to talk about my looks, we're not going on another date. If a man only wants to talk about himself and uh, his like you know where he lives and like I've had too many men tell me about their homes and oh I like you know oh I don't like I had a first house but I don't live there anymore because I when me and my ex broke up I gave it a hug for the kids like like they're trying to paint this narrative that they're a good guy even if that is true like okay okay sir like you made sure your children had a place to live and a roof over their head congratulations for taking care of your kids like, but it's like, you could tell, like, I felt like I met a lot of people who wanted like gold stars for doing decent human being things. That means that you're going to expect accolades for bringing me chicken noodle soup when I'm sick. Like, that's how I connect those things. Like some people may feel like, oh, that's reaching, but I do believe like certain behaviors demonstrate patterns and you can tell, like, when someone's talking to you about, certain, like, like their interactions with someone else, it's important to listen because it's a, it could be an indicator of how they're going to, you know, interact with certain things with you. Now, I know I'm a person, I get sick. I need someone with great bedside manner, okay? I need someone that doesn't mind putting someone else before themselves. Like, I need someone who's not going to be selfish, and it's important for you. That's why it's important for you to know who you are and what you like. So then when you meet people, you can vet them for those things. This might be a two-part video because it's already 30 minutes. And it seems like it's going to be long. So, let me see. So, one of the guys I was talking to, but I never actually went on a date with, I ended up, I think we spoke for like three or four days and then I blocked him. <laughs> I am notorious for blocking someone with no explanation. You know, call it childish, call it what you want, but... If I know that I'm no longer interested and when I tell you that I'm not interested, that you're going to put up a, a fight per se, or you're, you're going to want an explanation and, and I'm going to exhaust myself trying to explain to you why I'm not interested. Why am I going to waste my time? Like there, it doesn't matter why I'm not interested. I'm just not interested anymore. Like there's some people where I've had a conversation with them and I tell them, you know what, um, I don't see this going any place romantically, but if you want to be my friend or you want to be my homeboy, like that's cool. If you want to hang out sometimes on a platonic level, like that's okay, but I don't see this going anywhere romantically. And they're like, oh, okay, thanks. And then you have other people where you're like, um, you know, I don't see this going anywhere romantically. Um, I think we could be, you know, platonic friends. Like, 
they get an attitude. They get nasty with you. And I'm able to identify that in people. So if I feel like you're going to want to be this, one of those people that's not going to be cool about rejection, I'm just going to straight up block you. I'm not like, I'm not about to have an argument with a stranger. Like I'm not doing that. Like I'm not going to, and I'm no, I'm not explaining myself to a stranger either. Like, cause to me, if someone tells me, Tanya, I'm not interested. Like there was a guy that I remember when uh, when he and I started speaking, it was like a, I swear, like an interview. Like he was interviewing. It was like, um, what do you do? Where did you go to school? Have you been divorced? How many children do you have? Like it wasn't a conversation. It was a straight up like job interview kind of thing. And I was just like, okay. I'm like, well, either you're real serious about finding your person or you're neurotic. <laughs> I'm not sure which one it is, but I respect it, King, and good luck on your journey because <laughs> she is not me. But even in, in that situation, what I respected about that guy was like, he was intentional about what he was doing. Now, I was casually you know testing the waters but i guess he he was out here long enough where he was like i am above these shenanigans i'm looking for my wife and you know i'm intentional and serious about it and i can respect that she, like it, it just wasn't me like i'm not i wasn't ready for that level of commitment at that time and i just didn't like the approach either like approach like the nest is like not when I say finesse, not in the sense that someone's tricking you, but just you know, in, in in their approach, like how things are handled. Like some things require a little bit. Like people need finesse. Like people are not jobs. People are not technical. And I do notice that like a lot of men who work like in systems development or IT or with computers, like their personalities are like very one o one o one o. Like that, because that's how they think. Like they can't think like regular people. Like, oh, they just don't understand how to interact with people. Yeah, so the guy that I blocked, one of the reasons why I blocked him, well, there's several people that I blocked, but this guy, one of the reasons that I blocked him, like we were talking for a couple of days and the comments that he made about women was just, icky and he had daughters so I just you know I didn't like like certain things that he made like he was telling me about his other interactions with girls on the app and that's the thing too with me like if I'm dating you and you're dating other people until we have a discussion about being exclusive I don't expect it to just be me nor should you expect it to just be you because I've also had that situation where someone was surprised that I was dating other people and I'm like we never had a discussion about exclusivity so why wouldn't I be dating other people and he just kept mentioning like other people's expectations and how like they weren't qualified for the things that they were acting for and it's just you know to me I'm a woman first so it doesn't even matter just to hear you speak disparagingly about any woman is a turn off to me and then when I asked him why he's other relationships didn't work out he, he said he had some anger issues and that translated to me that I beat women. So <laughs> I got out there because you can't beat me, sir. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't even like when somebody speak hard to me. Like I'm very much a lover. Like I'm very much like you talk to me nice, very gentle, very sweet. I love my men sweet. Like those nonchalant men are not for me. I love my men sweet. I love my men that love and want to give me hugs and kisses and want to play all day. So that whole hard gangster doesn't work for me. Like I can't date those nonchalant serious types. Like that just doesn't work for me. But as soon as he said he had anger problems, I was out of there. I was like, oh, gotta go. So then after that guy, who I'm trying like I'm trying to recall. Like I talked to so many people. 
like honestly dating is exhausting like i used to think dating was fun from like when i was younger but as i get older <laughs> dating is exhausting like you just going through so many different personalities and and different needs and wants and and just Oh my goodness, just people like if you've ever worked in customer service, then it's like at the at the Black Friday, like the exhaustion that you feel at the Black Friday is what I feel about dating. Like and then some people just makes it harder for what they because you you when you're dating, you have those people who are not coming with good intentions. So they're really trying to figure out what you're looking for so they could pretend to be that thing, so they can I guess get whatever it is that they need out of you and skedaddle off so i am very good at not telling people exactly what i'm looking for like when people go like oh what are you looking for nothing i'm not looking for anything i'm waiting for something to find me when it finds me it finds me i want you to be yourself up front because the same way i don't want to waste people time like if i'm not what you're looking for i i would i, I would want you to know that so you can know up front that I'm not what you're looking for, so you can leave me alone. Because I wouldn't want anyone to settle for me, nor do I want to settle for anybody else. Like, I want someone who understands their triggers, who understands their limitations, who understand who they are and are honest with themselves, even if I don't agree with it. Um, because that will teach me to stay away from you. Like a lot of times, like nowadays, you have a lot of videos and a lot of people who are relationships experts and who talk a lot about relationships and they voice what they feel like they like and what they don't like. And then I see a lot of women in the comments getting really upset. Why are you upset? They've just told you they don't like you. Now you know to stay away from them. Move on. But women have a bad time with rejection just as much as men do that instead of just saying you know what it is what it is they don't like me i'm not their cup of tea and that's okay you're trying to convince people to like you no like it's never going to work out because you are who you are whoever you are when you're alone with yourself is who you're going to be with someone else it doesn't matter how much you pretend not to be that person like eventually the real you is going to come out that's why a lot of people get into these relationships and then it's like after a couple of years they're like oh my gosh you're a whole different person with me, no, I'm not a whole different person. You're like whoever you, whoever you met at the beginning, who's who, who I'm gonna be at the end. A lot of the times when um, my relationships end, what surprises people is that they feel like, oh my god, you're so cold, and that's something that every man has told me when our relationships end. Like, oh my god, you're so cold. It's not necessarily that I'm cold. It's just because you tried me. You pretended to be emotionally available loving compassionate and then as soon as i identified that i was bamboozled i'm no longer granting you access to me like why would i continue to give you access to me when you do not qualify to have me what if that's cold that's fine but like once i'm once i'm able to see through the charade it's done I, I'm not going back and forth with you. I'm not trying to convince you how what you're doing is wrong. I'm not going to try to change you. I'm not going to beg. Okay. You, that is who you are. Got it. <laughs> Good luck. Go find somebody else who's going to agree with how you are or, who, or who's going to appreciate you at the level that you're, you're offering. But as for me and myself, mm -mm, I'm not subscribing to your ministry. You can move on. It's really hard for me to talk about like people that I've dated before or people I've talked to because I really delete people. Like, I don't know. Like, you know how people harp over people? I don't. Like, like once it's over, like, I'll talk about it with my friends for maybe a week or I'll talk it through for a week because I can't believe the audacity. But after that, I don't think about you no more. I don't talk about you anymore. Um, you're not... Like, like I, I don't miss you. Like, you know, some guys like to come around, like, you know, when they, you know, like they love after like a certain amount of time pass, like they feel like that means like you have amnesia and you're not going to remember anything. And they come back with me. No, like I forget you, but I understand that you don't deserve access to me because if so, we would have continued. Like I've never left anybody who didn't deserve getting left. Like, 
in all my relationships or in any situation, I've always done all the leaving. Like men, <laughs> and it's not a brag, but like most men that I date, or well, actually all the men that I date, no one has ever left me. Like it's always me that end things like it. And even now, I still have some people that I've dated that that reach out to me that, that they find ways they either gonna text me they're gonna send me a little cash app with a message they're gonna send me a zell with a note to let me know like oh i miss you i this i that and i pay them this because like once i'm done like i don't do that back and forth like and, and that goes for any type of relationship like if i've ever stopped talking to you it's because you did something to me and I don't come to that decision lightly because I'm the type of person that when I meet people, I see their flaws. And if I'm going to rock with you, I rock with you flaws and all. So once you cross me and I know that I was loyal to you, like there's no going back with that. So um, let me see. Um, yeah, like so the last person that I took seriously <laughs> I'm laughing now because it's a funny story. I'm thinking about what I'm going to share. The last person I took seriously, we dated consistently for three months. And um, initially, <laughs> initially, what got me was like, so on Hinge, it tells you like their height, their race or whatever. Like it says six, five. And I was just like, okay and even though his pictures wasn't like up to par like what and like when we started messaging i was like oh what's your instagram and he gave me his instagram and then in his instagram it was more reflective of like what he looked like he was more attractive in his instagram pictures and i guess it's because of how he dressed like he like some men they're not swaggy they're just not like even when they can be cute and they can not be swaggy so I was just like, oh, okay. You know, I was having fun. I'm dating, like I'm dating multiple people. I'm having fun. So um, we started talking and then um, he seemed like a nice guy. <laughs> he seemed like a nice guy and um, we seemed to get along. Like we were able to like, like draw commonalities between like our backgrounds you know things that we've been through um the type of people that we interact with um the stories that we were telling like it was very entertaining I'll, I, I will give him that like he had some entertaining stories like like he was my type of guy like like if um we met under different circumstances I could see myself being cool with him like like, be my friend, but I don't believe in, like, you know how some people, like, they go to a certain level of people, and then after the fact, they're like, oh, let's be friends now. I, I don't do that. Like, there's, there's a certain boundaries that I have with, like, men that I decide to put in a romantic category and men who I decide to be friends with. But um, he was cool. We had good kiki. We had good fun. But Things ended because initially when we first started, like he was doing everything right. And like we were having a fun time, spending time with each other. And then like towards the middle and the end, I just felt like he got comfortable. Like first it started off with dates and like, you know, good morning texts and check-ins and good night check-ins and stuff like that. And then it turned into like FaceTiming every morning facetiming every night and i'm not really a facetime girl i have an iphone but like i'm not really into like that video chat all the time and one thing i noticed was like that was it, like it was triggering my anxiety because i from being single i had so much free time to myself and then it was like this man was occupying all my free time and it was kind of exhausting and i didn't recognize that until after i i ended things and it was like a breath of fresh air like Oh, great. Like, I have my time back to myself. <laughs> I didn't realize how much I miss being alone. Like, I really like being by myself. I like being by myself. Or if I'm going to give up my personal time by myself, you have to make it better. Because if you're going to be a dump or you're going to be pessimistic or just you're just good. Like, he would sit 
and have a scowl on his face. Like I met this happy person, this positive person. And then in times when he, he was by himself, like he had like a scowl on his face. And I don't even think he recognized that he was doing it. And that was indicative to me that there was an underlying issue. And I remember telling him like, you need to go back to therapy because it seemed like he had like this anger in himself. And I don't think he recognized that, you know, he may have been holding on to whatever issues or whatever he was dealing with. I don't think he recognized that he had un unresolved issues that was affecting his mood. Either that or he had a mood disorder. I don't know. But I remember telling him, and I think he got offended because I was like, I think you need to go back to go to therapy. And in my professional opinion, he needed to go to therapy. Like, like I feel like he had some unresolved things. Like he had either had some built up hurt or resentment because a lot of times when you've been through a lot of trauma, especially in the black community, like you need to talk through that trauma. You need to work it out. And um, in his life experiences, he definitely had some experiences that qualify as trauma whether he wanted to accept it as trauma or not and I just felt like he needed to explore that and he just kind of I guess I think he took offense when I told him he needed to go to therapy because most people when you tell them they need to go to therapy they think that you're calling them crazy which is wasn't the case like I was really offering and recommended therapy out of a place of concern and compassion but what ended up happening in that situation was like as the facetiming and the video chats increased i started feeling like we started like having a routine where i'm like okay like i wanted like the main reason i wanted to start dating was because i just wanted to have someone that i could share my life with to do the things that i like to do i like to go to brunch i wanted somebody that i can go to brunch that wasn't my girlfriend's I wanted somebody that I could go to dinner with when I wanted to go out to dinner and things like that. So now that we're dating and then you asked me to date you exclusively because you didn't want me dating anybody else, that means you're volunteering to be the person that accompanies me for all of these things, no? Because why would I still be doing all of these things by myself? Like once in a while, okay, but why would I be doing all of these things by myself when I have a man? So I pointed it out, like the old me used to like hold things in, like when things bothered me, but this new version of me, the post-therapy me, I, no, I'm gonna open my mouth. One thing I, like one of my friends, one of the things I always admire about her, like she always, it always seemed like she always lived very lightheartedly because when things bother her, she calls them out. Like not nitpicking over everything, but bringing attention so you have the opportunity to re remedy it and that's what I did like you know I just brought like I, I brought his attention to certain things and then after a while it low-key felt like he was doing certain things intentionally to trigger me like I'm not sure if that's what it what was really happening but that is exactly how I perceived it because in one conversation when when I we were having a discussion about something he projected a scenario and once he projected that scenario that was curtains for him because I was like oh so then that's what you're doing like he said I think that and I'm just using an example like I think that you're doing x y on purpose so then you could get me to react like this because this is the version of me that you like and I was like oh okay so in a lot of in a lot of situations, there, there are a lot of manipulative people that will withhold affection. And I used to be with someone like this that will withhold affection to get you to come and be like, "What's the matter? Did I do something wrong? Um, is everything okay? What's the matter?" So you can baby them, so then they can turn around and then be lovey dovey with you and give you that attention. I'm too grown for that shit. I'm and I'm not falling for that shit no more. It's one thing when I was younger, but now I'm too big. Like when when you get to a certain age, you and if you want to choose to keep on falling for the same thing over and over again, you deserve whatever you get. So once that happened, I was like, uh, gotta go. Got to go. But one thing I will say that I needed that experience, I need that experience to reinforce to myself that when something no longer serves me, I have the courage to walk away and not feel guilty about it because 
after I walked away, I was like, <laughs> I was so proud of myself. I was so proud of myself because a lot of men, especially when they're attractive, I think they feel, see that what I told you about women and, and feelings. <laughs> um, a lot of men feel that we um going to stick around because they're cute or because they have the physical prowess or we are just so desperate for companionship or we just want to be with a man that will settle and accept anything and baby i am not one of those girls i am not one of those girls you gotta do that with with, with a girl who's not used to being by herself you gotta do that with a woman who is desperate for love i love myself right so i love me my children love me. My friends love me. And most importantly, my mommy loves me. So I don't care. I don't care what nobody thinks. My mother thinks I'm good. <laughs> uh, some of my siblings, yeah, it's like, oh, this is case. Some of my siblings love me. But the thing about me, one thing, if you know me in real life, one thing you will say, I'm not a perfect person. However, like, I'm going to give you the real version of me like i'm not gonna give you a fake version of me if i don't like somebody you know when i don't like you if i like you you'll know when i like you like i don't pretend like i, I like i'm like my face tells it all like i can't hide i can't hide like how i feel like i could be cordial to someone like if it's work yes but i can't in personal relationships that's like why when i never understand like when my friends will end like certain relationships and they'd be like, oh, I met up with him for lunch. And I'm like, why? Why are you going back to the thing that hurt you? And maybe it's because I'm a cancer. Like, and I know most cancers I know are just like me. Like when something no longer serves us or when someone shows us that they don't care about us in the manner in which we care about them and they're not willing to do for us, what we know that we're willing to do for them, we walk away because eventually we know we're going to get hurt. And you will never, it's no hard feelings. And that's the thing people don't understand about me. They think, like my mom, she's a tourist and she thinks like I'm holding grudges. And I'm like, mommy, like I don't think about these people. I don't care about these people. They're really dead to me. Like that, like, like it's nothing that I'm holding on to. Like, I'm not holding on to, like, even when, even people who have done me wrong and actually have done me wrong, like, I don't hate them, but you'll never be around me, though. You'll never, like, that version of me that you used to know, you will never have access to her ever again. Because why would I do that to myself? I love me. And why would I subject myself to someone who doesn't deserve me? Like, I'm precious. And the reason why you want to come back is because you know for a fact after whatever you did, even if you don't want to take accountability for what you did, you know I didn't ever did anything wrong to you. And you know I treated you good. I find that after people go back out into the world after me and experience other people, that's when they want to come back because they've had an opportunity to compare and contrast. You can't come back. No. You cannot come back. I mean, some people believe in second chances. I don't. I used to. I don't. Because you know why? I go through great lengths not to cross or violate people I love because I don't want to lose you. So I go through great lengths not to do anything to step on your toes. So once I realize you're not willing to do that for me, that means you have no respect for me. And if you don't respect me, then what are we doing? Like, why am I, like, there's nothing that I can do to earn your respect. Once someone doesn't have respect for you, it's hard for them to re-respect you. Mm, I'm trying to see. Cream Cup from MAC is, like, one of my old-time go-to lip product. Lord. Oh, I'm looking for my pencil sharpener. My daughter plays with my makeup. Matter of fact, I had to wash all my makeup because recently she had pink eye. And I had to wash all my brushes. I had to spray everything because I was scared that she gave me, she was going to give me pink eye. 
I'm not putting on any lashes today. The older I get, the less that I go for that full glam with the lashes. And my eyes already, well, I already have a line here. Like I, I one, I get a line here because I'm, I'm always doing that. So like this. So I try not to do anything that will contribute to more wrinkles. And I do find that pulling, up, pulling off your eyelashes definitely will contribute to wrinkles. Because if, if we're not wearing eyelashes, how often are you pulling them off? Right? So I think that's something that's, that will ex, um, expedite this aging process. And I would say, like, my mother aged gracefully. And even though she has more melanin than I do, I believe that I'm going to age gracefully as well. So this is um, Taupe from NYX. Like, my makeup is a combination of expensive and inexpensive. You know, when I was younger, I used to do so much colors and spend so much time like blending my eyeshadows and stuff. If the version of me from 2009 could see the version of me now, she'd be like, who are you? <laughs> because when I saw you, like I would, I used to work at Walgreens and every day I used to come to work like beat down like sometimes i see my old pictures and i, I cringe at how i used to do my eyebrows because <laughs> i mean but you live and you learn and then you get love <laughs> but let me tell you me and my eyeshadow back then we had a time and you know i i wish like we had a, like the camera phones the way we did back then like what did I have? Like, I had, like, a Blackberry. And I remember I used to have to, like, put it in the mirror and try to take pictures. Like, it wasn't really great pictures, but I tried. Um, but I will say, and I even used to do people makeup back then. The crazy thing is, I do makeup better now than when I was trying to charge people to do makeup. Like, <laughs> that's, 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 that's the sad part. But um, this is my little get ready with me. I know I didn't explain anything, but hopefully you can follow along. Um, let me see. Um, I have to do this. I have to. I have oily skin, so what happens is, as the day go on, my um, my face, the oil that my face produces, it just naturally like blends into the makeup, and then it kind of just like sets it and it goes together. Let me see if this hair has done what it needed to do. Ooh. I had tightened it so tight, it's so uncomfortable. You know, see, like, instead of the hair sticking up, it just kind of, like, laid it down. Laid it down. And all I did was put water in there and just laid it down a little. Let me go back in. I don't really have any place to go because my daughter had got me sick. And today is Memorial Day. And in an effort to, like stay committed to the schedule that I um, promised of every Sunday. I think I am just going to record a couple of videos now. Like I had put a prompt on my Instagram for topics. I'm gonna see if I get anything there, but I am just gonna probably make like two more videos because I already did one. I'm probably gonna, this is gonna go up next week, Sunday. And then I am gonna make two more that will that will just be four weeks. And then in three weeks, I'll make another four and just do it like that. Like I like to try to keep the video short because the most tedious part of this entire process is editing. Um, recording is not, a, is not a really issue, but the editing, like you really have to sit there and rewatch it and then snip and clip and then add graphics or add whatever you think. And I will say like, I do enjoy it. Like it's really fun. I do enjoy it, but it's tedious. But um, thank you for watching. My timer says this is one hour. <laughs> so I might break it down into parts or I might just just only 
include the interesting parts so then it could make a good story but um that has been my hinge experience i'm no longer on hinge i stopped I saw somebody on Hinge, and once I saw them on Hinge, I was like, got to go. If this is what you're promoting and you're offering on here, I don't want to be on here. Um, now, I choose to meet people organically, um, in person, um, out while I'm out and about. Um, people that, because one thing I will say about online dating, like there's a lot of insecure men on online dating sites. Men that would never approach you in real life are on there because, of course, like, I guess it's nothing to sit in the comfort of your own home and text someone. However, when you're at the supermarket and someone is walking through the supermarket and you need to, you have to walk over to them, strike up a conversation, be personable, be charming, it's a little bit more difficult. So I, and I think that I prefer meeting people organically and in person either through friends and family or just bumping into someone especially when i go out by myself and i meet people who are also out by themselves um i've met several men that are out and about by themselves and what i like about those individuals that let you that let me know that we have something in common that we're compatible at least on that level like you don't mind going out you don't mind um like enjoying yourself and having activities because I, I don't go out all the time. However, that is something that I do do and I do enjoy. I find like a lot of people nowadays don't understand. Let me, let me, let me, actually, let me change that. I won't say nowadays. Black people are not taught how to date. Black girls are taught to put the head, your head in the books make sure you make a living for yourself get your education and be independent and then when you graduate college all of a sudden someone expects you to magically know how to get a husband and have some kids but no one ever taught you to date and the age in which you were supposed to be dating like 14 15 when you were supposed to be getting to know little boys and how they operate so then you could be able to interact with men you don't know the, how to do that and you don't possess the skills because they told you not to date and not to run after boys and they called you fast if you were even talking to a boy and I think within the black community, that has affected us adversely because now as adults, when you're trying to date, a lot of these men don't know how to date. They really think that dating is going out consistently for a month, a month and a half, and then just you, you're in the house like, oh, you want to be my girlfriend? Okay. And then they think like, okay, I don't got to do anything much. We're a girlfriend. Sir, this is not 11th grade. No. Especially when they want to, they want you to date just them. If you want me to date just you, then that means we need to date. Dating does not include you coming to my house and me going to your house. That's not dating. Dating actually means dating, going on dates. And a lot of people miss that concept. And I guess there are some people out there that goes for that or accepts that. As for me and mine, no. I have kids and my kids date. My boys actually go out. They they go out on dates to restaurants and pay for the dates and they entertain young ladies. And one of the things that they do is they, they vet who they want to go on dates with. So when they're going out and they decide that they want to take a young lady on a date is because they really like her and that they see something substantial with her. Any of these kids can learn how to do that. I'm not accepting any less from grown men and grown women. It's up to us for us to decide how we want to be treated. And I, it all starts with yourself, how you treat yourself. And that's why I keep on preaching, like, make sure that you're treating yourself in a manner that you want to be treated. Because when that right person comes along, it's going to feel like you. It's going to feel like that that agape love, that, that love that you're pouring into yourself. It's going to feel pure. It's not going to feel that it's ma manipulative or it's controlling. It's just going to feel like an extension of yourself. I truly believe that when you're happy with how your life is, that you're complete and relationships are 100 100 like i don't want to be with anyone that has any um delinquencies in their life that they need me to step into and fix it like i am not bob the builder i don't want to fix anybody i want every i want you to come hold and complete and happy and a lot of things that affect how the happiness someone's going through their mental health 
um, whether your parents are healthy, especially at this age, we have a lot of people, either your parents are sick or your parents are passing away. Do you like your job? Do you like where you are in life? Do you like how much money you're making? Um, I'm not rich, but I'm comfortable enough that I can pay all my bills and still afford to go out two times a month. I can go out every Friday. I can go to happy hour. I can go to brunch. Like I can afford to do these things for myself. And you have some individuals out here, like I'm not sure how they're managing their money, but I find women, even when we don't make much, somehow we magically can go on five trips a year, get our hair done, get our nails done, go out every weekend and still pay our bills. But men seem to have a hard time managing their finances. And that's not my responsibility. And that is not, I shouldn't have to be that burden of your financial inadequacies or your limitations. But a lot of men, um, I guess that's why like, they'll date intensively initially and then they try to scale it back. But my thing is, if you can't afford to date, you shouldn't be out here. If you cannot afford to go out, then get yourself together until you're at, you're, you know, you're at that space or date at that level that you can date like not everything requires like going out and spending like a, a, a lot of money there are so so many creative dates that you can do that some just lack the effort and that is very unattractive like if you like if you don't know how to mix a, like a dinner date with a beach date a dinner date with a, a let's go to the park a dinner date with a let's let's go to a museum let's walk and go get ice cream like there's so many creative things that people can do and I don't know maybe it's because I'm from a big city and we will just get up and just go out and we can find a million things to do and not break the bank that I'm accustomed to just being able to go out and just experience outside and now that I'm dating the place where they are not like as so so quick as a big city person that it's just very unattractive to me and it demonstrates lack of effort so when I do go out on dates like it's very like it's very cute like I'll go out to dates like like I said I don't go out to dates in places that um I frequent because I don't want to run into you like when this doesn't work I don't want to run into you and it's just you know it's just not appealing that's why I rather like meet people outside like I rather meet you outside where I know you understand and appreciate um certain foods certain events like I like meeting people at wine tasting I like meeting people at hotels because it also lets me know like your caliber of hotel that you like to stay in threat threat count matters to me like I, I when I was younger I would just do anything and stay anywhere now that I'm older no like I need soft sheets um I need great amenities um i want to be able to go to a spa day um i want i i enjoy getting facials and massages and things like that and i want to be with someone who doesn't think like that's bougie or who doesn't think that's like oh my god that's a waste of money because you can't afford it like i don't want anyone that wants to put limitations on me that they met me provided for myself when they initially met me just because they can't afford to do it and they feel guilty because when i date like honestly like i don't pay for my dates like when i'm when i go on dates like i'm not the one paying for it so i do understand like you know that financial burden is not on me but also you want to date like you are looking for someone so you need to make a dating budget like you need to have a plan of how you're gonna date and you need to date strategically and for men who are who are not able to do that I feel like that's that demonstrates um a lack of proper planning and that just it it, it kills my confidence in anything in the future because how are you going to lead a household like if you can't even organize your day in life which is this is something you're invested in and you're interested in but I mean other people have different opinions and how it should go but as for me that's how I feel so um I hope this is entertaining I am going to try to break this video down I'm looking at the time because I'm like I usually try to keep this like 20 minutes 15 minutes but now I'm noticing that I'm gonna have to edit like an hour I don't know. I can't get an hour and a half into 15 minutes, maybe 30. But um, thank you for watching. 
please like, <laughs> share, subscribe. Do share with your friends. Let tell them come over. Share in the comments. You can let me know if I'm right, if I'm wrong, if um like I'm just talking out the side of my neck. You can let me know. However, this has been my dating experience. But share your dating experiences below. Like, how has it been? Like, do you date online or do you meet people in person? And if you do date online, like, what sites are you using? And how has it been working for you so far? So, thank you for watching. Talk to you later. Didn't even ask me what I wanted. You made them assumptions.